Welcome to the University of Georgia Organic Undergraduate Laboratories. I'm Dr. Hubbard, I'm the laboratory coordinator here. We're gonna give you a brief tour of what our labs look like, talk about all the features, talk about all the instrumentation, look at all the safety equipment uh, that's available in the labs. So we'll take a look at the general layout here. We've got three bench tops. Each of these bench tops will handle four groups of two. So we have two students working here, two here, and two on the opposite sides. We have our monkey bars here, which double as our ring stands, where we can attach clamps and glassware to to make sure our apparatus are stable. We've got our cup sinks and our faucets here. This is for our condensers, feeding our condensers with uh, cool water so that we can do reflux and distillation. We've got all of our electrical outlets and we've got our internet connections here. Now as far as the, the individual station setups, we're going to go through a couple of the drawers here. Each of our individual lab stations has two cubby holes here and here. That's for students' backpacks. So we'll never leave any of our personal items on the floor of the lab. Everything has to go into a cubby hole to keep it safe. Remember that there will be uh, oftentimes spills on the floor. We don't want to get that all over our personal items. Then each station is given three drawers. We've got our basic quality glassware, research quality, and our microscale. We're going to go through each one of these drawers and show you what's inside. So if we open up our lab manual, we'll find a list of all of the glassware present in our lab station drawers. We've got our basic glassware, research quality, and our microscale kit. So this corresponds to drawer one, drawer two, and the bottom drawer, drawer three. So let's take a look. We're gonna go through each of these drawers and show you what the glassware looks like. We'll start out at the top of our list. We have two 50 mil Erlenmeyer flasks. We have four 125 Erlenmeyer flasks, slightly larger. Two 250 mil Erlenmeyer flasks. And the last of our flasks is our filter flask. This is a 250 mil filter flask. You can see our vacuum adapter that's been attached to the side. We're gonna use that for suction filtration during the course of the semester. We've got two of those. We've got three different beaker sizes, 100 mil, 250, and 400. Along with our beakers, we have some funnels. So this is what we're gonna to use to pour liquids and solids into our beakers and flasks. So we've got our powder funnels, we've got two of those. We have a series of watch glasses. There are four total. We have two smaller watch glasses, and we've got two larger watch glasses. We're gonna use these to weigh out starting materials and our final products, a variety of things that we'll, uh, we'll use these for. Next on our list are our spatulas. We have our metal spatulas. You may also have a metal scoopula in your drawer. Okay, so we have two of these. We'll use those for measuring out powders uh, during the course of the semester. We've got two glass rods. These are stir rods. We'll use them to stir, obviously. We'll also use them to help uh, induce crystallization during our recrystallization experiments. Attached to these glass rods are rubber policemen. Uh, and this can be used, you'll see that it's flexible, it's pliable, and we can use that to scrape crystals, um, from a watch glass, from a beaker, from a flask. Next up are our neoprene adapters. These are going to help us make a seal with our Erlenmeyer flask. So if we're using a filter flask, we'll put our neoprene adapter in the top of our flask. That's going to help make a seal with our Butner funnel that we'll see in the next drawer. Now we have our rubber pipette bulbs. These will pair with a glass pipette to help us draw up liquids uh, as we're getting our experiments started. We have two three mil syringes. 
Again, that's going to be useful for doling out liquids during the course of our reactions. So we've got those. And we have a total of 20 test tubes in our drawer. Okay, neatly arranged with a rubber band here. We'll put that back. Okay, and that's it for drawer number one. All right, so let's take a look at drawer number two. These are our research quality, our higher priced items. So we'll start out looking at our separatory funnel, which we have right here. Separatory funnel comes in three parts. We have our stopper, which goes into the top. We have our stopcock, which if you can see, if we focus in right here, we can see that there's a hole that goes through the center of this so that as we rotate it, we can open and close our sep funnel. This is gonna help us with our extractions. This is a very expensive piece of glassware. Be very, very careful with all of your glassware. In particular, this can be very delicate. We have two 100 mil round bottom flask. We'll use this for boiling, distilling, refluxing, a variety of uses. We also have two 50 mil round bottom flasks. These are all 2440 ground glass joints. Let's see, we have two short stem funnels here. We're gonna be using that to add in acids and bases to our reaction mixtures. We have two distillation heads. Distillation head will set onto a boiling flask, will be attached to a condenser on the right-hand side, and a thermometer and a thermometer adapter can go in the top to seal the system. So we'll use this for our distillation and a variety of other uh, applications. We have two of those. We have two condensers. Okay, this is a double jacketed condenser. You can see on the interior there's a straight tube that goes straight through the center and that connects uh, the top and bottom of the tube. That's a straight pass through. This interior that we see here with the inlets and the outlets, the adapters, that actually allows us to flow water through the center and cool the vapors that are traveling through that center tube. Okay, so that's our condenser. Two additional funnels, these are Butner funnels. This is what we're gonna use for our suction filtration. This is how we're gonna isolate our purified product during a number of our experiments. We use this in conjunction with the filter flask from drawer number one. We've got two graduated cylinders. One is a 10 mil graduated cylinder. A little bit more precise. And then we have our 100 mil graduated cylinder. So greater volume, a little bit less precise in terms of individual milliliters of measure. And last but not least, we have our alcohol thermometer. You'll have two of these in your drawer as well. Okay, so we'll use these for a variety of purposes during the course of the semester. We've got two alcohol thermometers for you to use. And that's it for drawer number two. So let's take a look at the final drawer, drawer number three. These are our microscale kits. Now there are two microscale kits per station. We're gonna take one of them out here and we'll take a look and see what we've got. So a variety of glassware here. We have our Hickman still head. Okay, and these have uh, ground glass joints as well. We saw those with the larger pieces of glassware. They also have O-rings and our screw caps here so that we can screw them down onto conical vials and round bottom flasks. I'll show you how that fits in just a second. We've got a side arm so that as vapors come up and condense, we'll be able to collect that using a needle or a pipette coming from the side arm, and then we can attach a thermometer adapter or some other item to the top just by simply taking off the screw cap. Or we can seal the system just like so. So a variety of ways that we can use this. We have a micro condenser. We saw the larger counterpart or the larger version of this in drawer number two. Okay, so we've got our inlet, our outlet. We have that inner jacket that we can run water through to cool vapors and condense them. Okay, so that's our micro condenser. 
we have our thermometer adapter. Now the thermometer adapter, uh, you would place your alcohol thermometer through the center. Let me show you how this fits on. If we were to use it with the Hickman still head, they fit together with the ground glass joint and then we simply use the screw, screw cap to attach them and now we have our thermometer adapter that will hold the thermometer in place inside the Hickman still head. So we can measure our temperature as we're doing our distillation or our reflux. Okay. We'll take that back off and we'll reset this. We have a Claisen condenser, right? Complete with O-rings and caps and septa. We've got a 10 mil round bottom flask. Okay, that's the smaller counterpart to the 2440s that we saw in the previous drawer. We've got two conical vials, a three mil and a five mil. Okay, three mil and a five mil conical vial. We can do a variety of things. We can heat in these. We can simply use them as a container for product or for liquids. Uh, there's a variety of uses for these. We have our tweezers, or our forceps. We have two spin veins. Spin veins, these are magnetic spin veins. What these do, you put them into a reaction vessel, you set them on top of a, uh, a stirring plate or a hot plate, uh, and they'll actually stir the solution automatically for you so that you don't have to swirl it yourself. So these are invaluable. They're also very tiny, and they tend to go missing very frequently, so we wanna make sure that we're paying attention to where we put them and, uh, and we keep them safe. So we've got two of those in our box. And last but not least, one that I overlooked is our drying tube. Okay, our drying tube, we can use this packed with cotton and a drying agent and another plug of cotton uh, to keep moisture out of our reactions if that's necessary. All right, and that is our microscale kit. So that's all the glassware that you're going to find in your lab station, and that will allow us to do a variety of different reactions. So we're going to take a look at the safety equipment that's present both in and outside of the lab. So between each of our individual labs, we have a pair of labs here. We'll have an emergency phone located here. We have a safety shower. We've got the lever that operates the safety shower. If we pull this lever down, we deliver 30 gallons of water in 10 seconds. So make sure that you're careful around this lever. You don't want to pull it unless absolutely necessary. Here's the shower head above us. So if there is a significant spill in lab and your TA directs you out into the hallway to use the safety shower, you'll stand under the shower pull the lever, and go from there. We have a fire extinguisher outside of each room. So our fire extinguisher is located here. This is something that only the TA will have access to and will use. If a fire starts in the lab, the student's only, uh, only responsibility is to remove themselves from the lab calmly and quietly and let the TA handle the situation. Okay, so let's move inside the lab and look at some of the additional safety equipment present there. Once we come inside the lab, we have a series of emergency and safety signs uh, full of useful information. We've got our emergency condition sign, which is available in a variety of places throughout the SLC, but there's one in each of the labs. We have our emergency contact numbers, so take careful note of these. And then we have our safety information, which tells us relative locations of all of our safety materials or our safety equipment. We have uh, the location of our shower, which we just saw. We have the location of our eye wash stations, fire extinguisher, first aid kit that we're going to look at in just a second, spill kit, and our MSDS sheets. So let's take a look at some of these items. As we spin around here, first thing that we'll take a look at is our eye wash station. So we have an eye wash station uh, here attached to the sink. We have another eye wash station on the other side of the room. You can see the orange caps there. Those are the two eyewash stations present in each one of our labs. We do not have an eyewash station on the back sink, so make sure you're going to the side sinks in the room uh, if something occurs. We have our chemical spill kits and our first aid kit. 
underneath our sink. We've got absorbent barriers just in case that there's a significant spill. We have our spill kits, caustic spills, solvent spills, and we have our vapor suppression. And then of course our first aid kit here. Behind us here, we're gonna take a look at our snorkel system. So we have individual snorkels for each student workspace. These are set to our house vacuum uh, and we use these to evacuate uh, any fumes, to ventilate any fumes uh, that are generated during the course of a reaction. So this keeps us from uh, inhaling anything that we should. So we have a series of snorkels, one per station. Back here to the left, we have our fume hood, all of your hazardous waste buckets, all of your starting materials, everything will be housed in our fume hood. We have two of these, one on each side of the room. So if you turn to the, the back of the room there, you'll see the second hood. You'll dispense all of your liquids inside of these hoods. We don't want any vapors out in the main laboratory. Underneath each one of the hoods, we have a flammables cabinet and a corrosives cabinet. These are things that the students will not need to, to uh, open or to uh, deal with. This is something just for the TA, but this just gives us additional storage for hazardous chemicals. Along with all of these safety systems, we also have our broken glassware disposal. So if you were to break a piece of glassware or a pipette or a capillary tube, that always goes into our broken glass, never into the regular trash. We have to make sure that nobody gets cut or harmed. So we have this uh, cardboard exterior, which will keep broken glass away from uh, anybody who's emptying them out. Just like the broken glass container, there's only one place in the lab that students are allowed to discard of their gloves, filter paper, and any paper towels that have come into contact with chemicals. And that's our red hazardous waste lab debris only can. We've got a step on the bottom, which opens it up so it's hands free. Place your gloves in here, and you're good to go. Now, no gloves will ever be disposed of in the regular trash. That's extremely important. When it comes to disposing of hazardous waste, anything that you've generated during the course of the lab, we have specific containers that are labeled and they're placed in each one of the fume hoods. So for this one, this is our hydrogenation of olive oil for 2211 and 2100. So any waste generated will go into this bottle and only into this bottle. That also goes for any rinsings, acetone or water rinsings, from cleaning out glassware. We never want to rinse that down the sink. We always want to put it into the waste container. Last but not least, we have our emergency gas shutoff valve that's located in the front of the room. Labeled very obviously here, we have a big red button so that if we have a problem with the gas system, we can hit that and it will cut it immediately so everyone will be safe. Let's take a look at some of the equipment that we use in our organic laboratories, what's available to us. We have our polarimeters. I'm not going to go through the specifics of each one of these items. We'll talk about them in a general sense. We'll let the TAs go over them in more detail when you get to that point uh, in your uh, reactions, your experiments. So we have our polarimeters. We have our digi melts used for determining melting points of solids. We have our hot plates and stir plate combos. So these are stored on these uh, shelves here. Uh, there's more of them behind the wide erase boards here that you'll see and use during the semester. All of the cords for these are located in the drawers in the front of the room, so we're going to keep them separated so we don't end up having uh, melted or burned cords after the, the experiment is finished. Also in the drawers up at the front of the room, we have our supply drawers, where we have our Reynolds wrap, our filter paper. Let me show you what some of this looks like. All right, so our filter paper. We have our vacuum grease that we'll use for our reflux, distillations, so on and so forth. Starch paper, pH paper, that's in one of our drawers. In the second drawer, we have our glass pipettes. We're going to be using those quite a lot to dispense liquids. We have our copper wire, cotton. Right. We'll have cotton plugs that we'll use for making uh, columns for a variety of different purposes around the lab. We've got our small filter paper, so this is just a smaller version of what we saw in the first drawer. Scissors, 
and our melting point capillaries. These are going to be extremely important when we're doing all of our melting point determinations. You're going to see this in experiment number one for 2211, and we'll use it quite a bit in 2212. Let's see if I can get one out of here. So these capillaries, they're closed at one end and open at the other end. Please do your absolute best to keep these drawers as neat as you see them right now. It's imperative that we keep all of this organized so chaos doesn't take over. So we have all of our equipment here. We've got a variety of other drawers, uh, clamps, and additional glassware. Also at the front of the room, this is where the TA is going to be doing most of their teaching. We've got an Elmo so that they can project up onto the uh, screen and show you different examples uh, for any of the calculations that you have to do, anything that you need for your experiment. We've got our projector, uh, projector screen control. We have our presentation PC as well. So they'll be giving you a pre-lab lecture on the automatic screen that comes down in the front of the classroom. And that's basically it for the front of the room. Let's take a look at some of the instrumentation that's available in each of our organic undergraduate laboratories. Here we have our IR spectrometer. This is a Thermo Fisher Nicolette IS-10. We'll be using that for a variety of experiments, both in first and second semester organic. Next, we're going to take a look at our Milestone FlexiWave microwave unit. Our microwave unit uses these simple reaction vessels made out of Teflon. We'll place our reaction components inside, and instead of taking an hour to reflux and to finish our experiment, we can do the same thing in five to ten minutes. Let's take a look at the inside real quick. We take our reaction tubes that you saw right there, place them into our carousel, and we can do 24 reactions all at the same time in a single unit. In the back of the room, we've got four balances that we use to weigh out our solids for the beginning of the reaction and to uh, measure the weights of our products at the end. So we have four of these arranged across the back of the room. We also have our oven, our drying oven. Take a look inside real quick, a couple of drying racks. Oftentimes, you'll take a damp product that's on a watch glass, place it inside the drying oven to drive off any remaining water alcohol solvent, things of that nature. Final instrument that we'll look at in the back of the room is our series of two rota evaporators and our chiller unit here. This is our chiller. It allows us to cool down the liquid flowing through our evaporator coils. We have our vacuum pump here, all of this designed to drive solvent off of a reaction solution so that we can obtain a pure product. The final two instruments that we have uh, in our organic laboratory setting is our GC. This is a Shimazu GC 2014. We've got uh, two detectors, a TCD detector and an FID detector. If we take a look inside, we can see the two columns in our oven section. We'll use this to separate volatile liquid mixtures. Next up is our Proton NMR. So this is our PicoSpin desktop NMR. It's a Series 2 PicoSpin 80. Inlet and outlet take it in a capillary loop through the center of an electromagnet, which allow us to collect Proton NMR spectra of all of our products. The last thing we'll touch on before we end the video is proper dress code in the laboratory, starting with our shoes, closed-toed shoes, full pants, ankle-length pants with no holes, We'll always wear a shirt with a high collar, and we'll wear our lab coat on top. Always buttoned, never left open. We'll wear gloves anytime that we're working with chemicals. Make sure that we have our lab goggles on at all times as well when we're in the lab. If you have long hair, pull it back behind your head in a ponytail, and that will take care of our safety requirements in the laboratory. We look forward to working with you this semester. Good luck.